Hello everybody, today is going to be an emergency stream. I have just noticed in this video that this basic mid white chick, I will say the B word later on for monetization, but she, this Tiffany Furry character, I run into her videos and they're kind of wholesome. They're, I mean, she's kind of attractive, you know? And here's the thing, mid, and we kind of like mid. It's, it's reasonable, it's workable, not something you aspire to, but something that you can reasonably afford, kind of like a souped up Camry or maybe like a low end Lexus. And then we're talking about this lady. now. What I noticed here is the important stats is that she is hating on Mr. Beast. And again, I didn't even know really that he existed more so than just the name up until like two months ago. I've seen every single video he's made now and they're phenomenal. And again, these are very normy, kind of like very basic videos. And yet they're very good, high scale, also very morally benign. That is one thing you got to tell them because in this generation, we're talking about a lot of like queers and whatever else um, with their content. You don't want to see that if you're me. And listen. You get Mr. Beast, who's an influence to the kids, and, you know, is he teaching, like, is he Andrew Tate? Oh, my God, he's so right-wing. No, but he's also very reasonable and inherent in this um, Overton window being shifted towards the left. You must see people that are in the middle as being inherently right-wing, as um, fixtures in the um, nomenclature that are basically transcendent of their times in the more aggressive sense. So it's ultimately a good thing. But, again, we have these ferocious leftist idiots. Idiots. Fools. Fucking fools. These people make the mistake oftentimes where they are hating on people. And again, these criticisms are just nitpicks. These things are not productive. People will say, he did this, but not in this way. He did this thing, but it's not as good as you think. Shut the hell up. You don't know anything. You ain't a millionaire. You ain't got the answers way. You ain't got the answers. It's so true. These people are freaking idiots. Nobody is going to understand how to do these things logistically in regards to charity. Then Mr. Beast, and we're going to assess certain criticisms. But just for you to know, I mean, if you don't know who Mr. Beast is, then I don't know why you're watching. Again, any Zoomer would know who that is. And ultimately, this Tiffany Ferg girl is 27, and she has she, her in the bio. So you know how bad it's going to be when she has she, her in the bio, 27. You know, which um, means she's still, like, she's not aging, but, you know, like, would have had her five years ago. Yeah. Okay, anyway, let's go. And I'm still fascinated to this day. Mr. Beast is an enigma. I have so many questions. Okay, hi. Literally, as I filmed that, Mr. Beast posted a new video, 1,000 Blind People See for the First Time. And there's a lot to unpack. Originally, this whole script was very different, but honestly, because of that video and all the discourse around Notice it, how she I talks couldn't... when she looks up and then also moving her hands. She's very insecure about what she's saying. Granted that she probably has a script for everything, so just notice that. Post something about Mr. Beast right now without talking about it. So I've basically rewritten and re-edited this entire video. Cheers. Mr. Beast has become extremely popular in recent years. He is currently the most subscribed creator, aside from a few corporate channels, and has a reach of over 250 million Why across all it, It's like the spirit of Jackass, but younger and a bit more PG. There's lots of fast edits, sound effects, she and screaming. Like Mr. Beast has said that his average it. viewer would be a boy who plays video games, really so that makes sense. Way. Mr. Beast has built his business by continuously spending more and more on each video. The giveaways so? are bigger. The stunts are wilder. The more he Good. spends, the more views he gets, the more he can reinvest in the business. That is the Mr. Beast way. When people yeah. say nobody does it like Mr. Beast, that is true. And he wants to maintain that. He wants his videos to be bigger, crazier, and more expensive than anything or anyone else on social media. But perhaps nobody should be doing it like Mr. Beast. The waste, the extreme spending, and oh all-encompassing obsession oh, with work. Maybe Mr. Beast doing all this is too much. Down, Mr. Beast is Shut doing too down, much? Really? You mean he's helping too many people? Changing too many lives? Oh, oh of course. So We've got to talk about- so, Stop hating. Stop nitpicking. And make the cafe oh thrive. God. In the meantime, there's also drama. Amelia encounters family secrets. Oh, but and you're promoting really a, like the sound effects, a game? Especially Come on. Skip. There's watch it as that. entertainment. Of course, no one was harmed in his version, but the Squid Game show is so dark and has a lot of social commentary. So, okay, her criticism is that he made a Squid Game and, like, the show is, like, so dark in the commentary. And, like, for you to make a Squid Game that's positive and that is fun, that costs a lot of money, is, like, problematic. Shut up! These people are no fun to be around. And you would know if you're in college, these, uh, these libtards, god damn. And the white ones too, they're the worst. No matter how much he spends on a video, he's going to make all of that back and probably more. So let's not act like his contests and giveaways are purely selfless. Mr. Beast is making millions. They don't have to be. If they're profitable, that's a W, okay? Who freaking cares? Like, okay, for instance, if you were to watch the Mike Tyson highlights, you notice that he's playing, um, playing a lot of these matches in the Trump Plaza. Trump is profiting off it, but Mike Tyson looked up to Donald Trump as an older uh, male figure. And it's still a benign thing if, if a guy makes money and there's a benefit to be attributed to whatever he's doing for the people. And listen, you, you can criticize, well, he could be giving, you know, more free money to these people and not take any profits. Then why the hell would he do it? Because oh, he's a good guy. I want to see you do it with your money then. Give whatever you have to the homeless and we'll see how you do it. Give up your Starbucks. Give it to some black dude. You're not going to do that because you're smart enough to know that is, you know, it's unreasonable. And you might say, well, I think only rich people should have to give away their stuff. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay, come on. 
millions and his brand continues to increase in value. Plus, he gets the added bonus of lots of positive PR. He gets to be known as a philanthropist. In 2020, Jimmy started Beast Philanthropy, a separate channel and 501c3 charity. 100% of profits from ads, merch, and sponsorships on this channel go toward making the world a better place. Unlike yeah. his main channel that has more stunt and competition Let's focus, a thousand blind people see again by sponsoring cataract surgeries. But obviously, a title like that would not be as clickable. So he makes it a little more snappy and shocking. In this video, we're hearing a thousand people's blindness. Yeah. It's great. Classic hype, Mr. Beast. Most of us see the world like this. But here's the thing, 200 million people see To Jesus, God, a savior, a messiah. Okay, this is another illegi illegitimate criticism from Tiffany. Again, people compare Mr. Beast to Jesus, therefore, what, so what? If you look at literally any person that is of any reputation, that is a guy who is inspirational, they will be compared to Jesus, you know? And again, he has, what, millions and millions and millions of fans, and then you're going to say, like, well, off of, like, these 20 comments that I found in 10 different videos in the comment section out of 20,000 comments, I find this problematic. Who freaking cares? If you were to look at, oh, Bruno Mars' video, bro, this is like Jesus, bro, Eminem, you're, you're like God, you're the rap God. Again, it's not that deep, okay? You're overthinking it. And again, you're just me watching because literally nobody would ever say that Tiffany is anything like God or Jesus. And even even if you were a guy, they would not say the same thing. Okay, so how about you shut your mouth? She is just hating. I mean, it's plain as that. Some of these are jokes, obviously. But to be fair, he has kind of been stealing Jesus' brand. Jimmy, new image recommendation? Grow your hair out. Keep rocking the sandals. But really, I do find funny. this language fascinating. He's blessing people, or the implication that he cured blindness. Mr. Beast paid for surgeries, but he did not cure blindness. Now he here's the thing, Mr. Beast did, himself may not have a savior complex, but many of his did. fans project that onto him, and he doesn't really push back. I feel like I'd be like, hey, what, I- you want him to literally say in the video, guys, I'm not that cool, I'm not great. Why don't would you don't do call that? me Jesus. So anyway, let's look at his responses on Twitter. January 28th, the day this video was posted, we helped a thousand people see. Literally. Go watch the new video. Same day, the video is ranked number one, which means it's performing very well. Yes, you guys like the new style. If you're a creator reading this, don't be afraid to take risks. Classic metric-focused Mr. Beast, right? As the video gains steam, criticism- Again, you would care about metrics if you're actually famous, bitch. No, 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 wait, wait, look at this. She has how many subs? 70, 762,000. Oh, metrics, as if you don't care about rolling metrics. in. So let's break I mean, down all of these complaints. I think the number one complaint or negative response is basically, this video is the epitome of those feel-good like stories me. that are actually tragic. The fact that it took the charity of a millionaire YouTuber to restore a thousand people's sight shows how badly our healthcare systems are failing. Shut the it is sickening oh, this Oh my god. Oh, the government, oh, the government won't give me more free shit. Oh man, I'm so oppressed. Oh, shut up, shut up, seriously. Oh my god, the government won't pay for this. I'm tired of giving them this premise. A lot of people that defend Mr. Beast and Fortune, they're like, we should fix the healthcare system. But I mean, I guess rich people should solve it. No, no. First of all, there's probably a valid reason as to why the surgery isn't free. Namely, because there's probably nuances in adjudicating such processes where you're going to say, okay, I want to advocate for this eye care thing, but not do the other thing. And among other issues, right? For instance, if you were to propose a bill that said, we're going to give the cataract surgery for free, the issue is, is that people, probably Democrats in this case, will try to settle in more shit, more free healthcare for different things, a lot of things that aren't even productive. And that's probably why it wouldn't pass Congress. But listen, the point being is that, you know, oh my God, this bad thing isn't covered by the government. That's immediately something that the government should fix in the most optimal way. That's not really the case in most situations. You know, if you mature in life, I know that she's like 10 years older than me, but listen, if you're old enough, you'll finally realize if you're smart that things that are in place are most likely done so in purpose, okay? There's a valid reason as to why, okay? If you look at any fixture of our society, the reason why it is the way it is is most likely for a confluence of different reasons. So if the government doesn't do something, it, somebody else a long time ago probably thought through the same thing that you did. Oh, what about the cataract surgery? Clearly, a lot of surgeons, a lot of people on boards of Obamacare, a lot of people that were formulating processes such as Obamacare, these policies would have been thought through from smarter people than you, Blondie, meaning that they probably have a better reason for why that isn't in case than, than whatever you're saying. And again, People that are liberal are smart enough to know this sometimes, you know, destiny would probably, I think destiny would actually bring a better point against Mr. Beast than this white chick, but then again, almost any guy could. Okay, so. 10 minute procedure is not available to everyone who needs it free of charge. We need free universal health care, especially here. Cringe, shut the f Oh my, we need free universal health care, shut Here up. in the US where Mr. Beast and I are based, we really have no excuse. This is an extremely wealthy country, but the health insurance companies and other massive entities lobby against any attempts at a public Cope. Um, let's see what she read. Um, for decades, the largest association of American doctors had also been one of the country's most effective opponents of progressive health care reform, reform. For much of its history, persuading the, M the American Medical Association to consider a single pair style would be a little like asking the National Rifle Association to ban assault weapons. That's ridiculous.
So you're saying that it's the doctor's fault about the health care, but not the health insurance providers. Again, these sort of things are not intelligent to point out. Oh, man. Universal health care system, because that would ruin their business. Notice Obviously, is this entire complaint lobbied directly at Mr. Beast? No, right. but people are just pointing out what his video is a reflection of or a symptom of. So complaint number two, helping is good, but this video is ah, still exploitative and charity corn. We are all happy that a thousand people now have improved sight. Lolo that fact alone is undeniably a wonderful Lolo thing. Bros, and while these systemic like failures are not Mr. Beast's fault, obviously, making content out of people's needs and desperation, that is textbook exploitation. I know the word exploitation may seem a bit strong, but he is using these people to get views. Again, another leftist L. They'll take nomenclature and common words to use for grave issues like um, like tape with an R or they'll take um, exploitation or flex trafficking, if you know what I mean, with an S. Um, and they'll uh, attribute it to the most minute thing that could even fall under the umbrella of said pretense and then use the effectiveness of said word to then um, basically malign somebody or a group or an idea. You know, this is somewhat Marxist in my opinion. And um, of course, she doesn't know that. But. The point is, is that a lot of these leftists will say, um, and again, conservatives do the same thing, but they'll say like, oh, you don't like black chicks? That's racist. It's like, well, I mean, when people used racist in the 50s, it was an actual accusation. It was something where this guy's actually in a clan's a hoodie or, you know, it's actually serious where if it's like you said the N-word with an A to your friend on Xbox, you're racist. I mean, it's like not even the same thing. You can just tell that that sort of overtone window has been shifting. Like, for instance, if somebody were to call you racist now, people would have to look into it. Whereas if somebody were to call you racist 40 years ago, that would have actually carried weight and they would have just assumed. People are running um, terms into the ground on the right wing as well. They'll, a lot of people are calling um, a lot of like gay stuff, um, gr uh, grooming and whatnot. A lot of it really isn't, even though it's still wrong to them, you know. So again, people will tend to overuse terms, but the left most certainly. And so she says, oh, it might be a little bit of a reach, but you know, exploitation is getting views out of people. Well, I mean, that's like, okay, so then any drama organization, any news, celeb gossip, that's also exploitation, isn't it? Without featuring the people, hearing their stories, Ridiculous. there really wouldn't be a video, right? So it's important to ask, what does the blind community think of Mr. Beast's video? The blind community? Are you... Of course, they're not a monolith. I have seen tons of Only different opinions. Say that. Some blind folks enjoy the video and don't have any problems with it. Others have raised some issues. So here's one perspective from With Hannah D on TikTok. I think it's absolutely fantastic that Mr. Beast paid for a thousand people's cataract surgery. But that's just it. He paid for a procedure. He did not cure blindness. Nobody said there are he hundreds of diseases, blindness. and blindness, blindness is a spectrum, but not every single one of them can be cured. What's upsetting is that people are talking about it as if he made some type of a revolutionary discovery that cures blindness as a whole, and that's just not the case. But this is the part of the video where I really had a problem. In the video, he says this, patients going into surgery have a chance of getting their life back. Just because someone is blind does not mean that their life is any less fulfilling than the next person. Cope, oh my fucking God. Just because they can't, really? That, that, that is a blind, blind cope, seriously. You know, if you're blind, it can be just as good. Not really. It's like saying, oh, um, you know, am I, I, I really want to uh, do paintings, but oh, but I'm blind, but I'll be just as good of a painter. I mean, if you're blind, by definition, you'll have less things to be able to do. Like, a lot less things. Okay, design, sports, a lot of things you can't do. And, oh, it's just fulfilling. Yeah, if you like staring out of a window, feeling the air hit your face and not knowing what's in front of you, then sure. But again, that is just ridiculous. It's like saying, you know, I can be just as fulfilled by playing an 8-bit video game um, version of Call of Duty with no colors on it. No, I mean, if you're into that, I guess, sure. But, I mean, for literally everybody else, I'd be like, no. No, oh, thank you. Okay. Most people that are blind would want to open their eyes and actually see for the first time, not be relegated to not even looking at the camera at the TikTok procedure because obviously you don't even know where it is. Come on. That statement that we could get our lives back perpetuates the stereotype that we're incapable. And while you he didn't say that, it's the implication of oh, that statement oh that gosh. matters. I feel like this could have been a wonderful opportunity to educate 132 million people rather than reinforce again, stereotypes for 132 million people, but that's just me. Like, Mr. Yes. Beast's strategies with these giveaways has always been, the more he gives, the more he will make back. And this is nothing new for Jimmy. He's been so, doing it since he got his first big brand deal in 2017. It was for $10,000, and he gave it all away to a homeless man, in a video, of course. He's been very clear in interviews and podcasts, giving away money is a huge part of his growth strategy, especially back then. But on the Beast philanthropy site, they kind of rewrite history a little bit. It says, when Jimmy Donaldson received his first sponsorship of $10,000, he wondered, how can I transform this money into something good? Not wanting to keep the money for himself, Jimmy agreed to the sponsorship deal with one condition. He was able to give away all the money. The sponsor agreed. Again, I'm sure he was happy to help that man, but he didn't just want to transform the money into- Okay, whatever.
Making profit okay, out of videos. Are you okay with it? Hell lost. yeah. <laughs> That's right, best, YouTube. Best day of my life, right here. How people don't care if I use them for views? Mr. Beast has been commodifying charity. Donations or charity should, in theory, be about giving, right? You shouldn't really benefit from it, aside from maybe feeling good. But Mr. Beast is literally profiting from it, aside from his philanthropy channel, at so least. What? And all of this helps oh his God. brand grow, which also enriches him. And some people might say, no, he's giving away every cent he makes. No, he's not. He's obviously not. The math wouldn't math. And I'm sure even after all of his expenses, there's money left over. Whatever. Anyway, aside from Mr. Beast's benefit, I strongly believe that people deserve dignity. They shouldn't have to have a camera in their face while they're experiencing an emotional surgery, for example. I'm just not a fan of exploiting they're all down with a retard. Oh, at $500 million. And he's on route to potentially become YouTube's first billionaire. He Good. could absolutely afford to do all of his charity off camera. But hey, if he still wanted to post some videos on the Beast Philanthropy channel to earn more money for the organization, he would run out of money very of the, fast. The um, nonprofit industrial some complex, sort of as I said, I do have my idiot. critiques of charity. But if Mr. Yeah. Beast wants to this continue doing this, I think those are some ways that he can do it. That's a little less exploitative, logic. a little less of using oh, the people that he is helping. So going back to Twitter, I was trying to watch his responses to all of this. After there was all of this discourse about his video, the role of charity and systemic failures, two full days later, Mr. Beast tweets, I don't understand why curable blindness is a thing. Why don't governments step in and help? Even if you're thinking purely from a this, and they're like, see, haters, Mr. Beast agrees that our government should fix healthcare. And I'm like, I think after all of those responses, all the mainstream media attention, Mr. Beast felt compelled to point out the obvious. It took him two days to say anything like Who fuck in his version. But this, this girl wants all to fuck Mr. Beast. Oh my goodness. Jesus. That would require a whole oh, other video man. to get into, but you know what? A universal public health care system paid by taxes would actually be the most cost effective. We would actually save a lot of money. Go and while we're at it, wrong, you know wrong, what else wrong. would help people be more productive? Living wages, parental leave, housing for all, this eliminating poverty, so just spitballing. Mr. Beast, I agree with you. Let, let's keep talking about this. Anyway, I do not Dirty assume blondie. that Mr. Beast is a secret leftist oh, king. He seems pretty apolitical in his videos, and I think that is also a content strategy. I don't think he would risk right. being political. But it is very important to note, Mr. Beast is one of the most influential figures online. If he wanted That's to, he could create a healthcare campaign control. with huge reach. On the other hand, it's kind of scary that in having such a massive platform, he could use his influence in any way he wants. That's awesome. You can, and you can do whatever you want, and you can influence people how you want. It's just wild, you know, how much influence the top YouTube channels have. Like, for us, we have 100 million people that watch almost everything we put up. When? When has someone else ever had that kind of power without having to go through a network or anything? I just upload whatever I want. Crazy. Does that ever worry you that you have that much influence on so many people? Mm, no. I think we were, you know, we, we did Team Trees, we yeah. did Team Cs. I was surprised that he said no. Like, even me, with my level of influence here, I am very, very concerned. I'm constantly concerned about what I'm Woman saying and what moment. I'm promoting. Oh, I'm so, so the dreadful. fact that he's just like, oh God, no. So <laughs> I was like, oh. My God, I would love to have that piece in my mind, but I do not. Anyway, in the middle of all these tweets about the curing blindness video, Mr. Beast suddenly polls his followers. This would you vote for me totally if I ran for president? Like... Over 2 million people responded and 70% said yes. Clearly all the so... Jesus comparisons and you should run the country tweets may have gotten to his head. Mr. It, Beast has also it, jokingly it, asked if he- did the same thing with the presidential poll, it would do 20 times as good as like an actual election where he'd get like half of a percent about pulling Twitter like that, whatever. Obviously this tweet is a joke, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was a hint of truth in it. And by the way, right now he's only 24, he's very young. Imagine where he might be in terms of power and influence by the time he's 35. If he gets enough support, why wouldn't he try? The rich guy turned presidential candidate pipeline is terrifying. I'm rich, I'm what good at handling business and money. Let me run this country like a company. Sense. Just because they're a household name or claim to have success or expertise does not mean that they are at all qualified to run a country. We do not need any any more billionaires or aspiring billionaires running for president. Honestly, I think that should disqualify you. I'm, I wanna, I wanna, oh my God. Oh my gosh. <sighs> you know how, you know how the Russians sent up a guy into space and then he came back and burnt it to a crisp? Listen, we need space, <laughs> space exploration to Mars. Tiffany, you wanna volunteer? I cannot assure you that this won't be a one-way ticket, okay? <laughs> no, but seriously though, god damn, that was the dumbest shit I've heard all day. Oh my gosh, this shit. Being a billionaire disqualified? What? That's like if that's like if you said any guy who's over six foot two is disqualified from being my boyfriend. She would never say that. She would never say that. Bros, come on, shut it down. Shut it. Down. All that being said, the cult of personality around Mr. Beast is a bit scary. His fans will fiercely defend Jealous. him against the quote unquote haters. Since Mr. Beast does so much good, it's hard to criticize anything that he does. Jimmy can do no wrong because true, he's donated true. so much. He gives so much. It's basically his hall pass to get out of anything. But it's not just his fans that think My this way. Jimmy himself that thinks that a lot of this hard. criticism <laughs> is unfair. In one of the podcast episodes I listened to, I can't remember which, Mr. Beast basically complained about how he's covered in the mainstream media. He basically said, I could donate tons of money and they would still give me negative press. True. Though honestly, I think the vast majority of mainstream coverage I've ever seen about him has been very positive. So I don't know what he's talking about but, but also he's the biggest thing. youtuber it would be insane if no one were allowed to question him or his work see she completely missed jimmy's point he was saying i do 100 percent good and yet the media coverage is like 80 percent good it should be 100 percent good
Whereas with her, there's going to be the 20% of people on the Pareto Principle that are going to be bitching up. Oh my god, you're so much more efficient than us. You're so much better. I'm going to nitpick on the morality of it. But I would do the same thing because I'm a stupid... Seriously, okay? Jimmy is killing it. Mr. Beast is not on pills. He's killing it. He's younger than you. Okay, more successful than you, Tiff. And so Tiffany's felt it. It is so true. My goodness. Ever. Then he tweeted this the other day. Twitter. Rich people should help others with their money. Me. Okay, I'll use my money to help people, and I promise to give away all my money before I die. Every single penny. Twitter. Mr. Beast bad. Yeah, Mr. Beast, all of Twitter was calling you bad. There was probably one, even slightly a negative response, for every thousand tweets of fawning praise. And also, every critical post that I came across agreed, first of all, that helping those thousand people Mr. was Beast a good thing, but they were just trying to have a nuanced discussion about charity or these sorts of videos. But no, 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 that equals Mr. Beast bad. Not bowing down to Mr. Beast calling him the goat, calling him Jesus is bad. Okay. I can understand the youngest parts of his audience, the like literal children maybe not being super literal critical children all of his yeah. content keep up the pace and the ante with more jump cuts more prizes i'm sure if there's anything mr beast has learned from all these videos he's made he knows his audience's desire for exposure and prizes he can make people do the most ridiculous things like stand in a circle for days on end he recognizes that most americans will do just about anything for money so speaking of another silly twitter poll from jimmy he posted if someone offered you ten thousand dollars but if you accept a random person in the world dies would you do it first of all why would you even tweet that and out of almost two million votes 45 percent of people said yes so uh, what do you learn about human nature from that? That's a, a good question. Honestly, it was, this is like late at night when I threw that up too. I was just like, huh, this will be a funny thing. I, I assumed it'd be 90% no and like 10% yes. Awesome. A lot of the replies on the tweet were like, hell yeah, why not? And I was just not expecting that. Was it disturbing to you, surprising to you? A little bit, yeah. But I, you know, obviously a lot of people were trolling, yeah. but I actually, you know, when you read through those replies, I do think like 10% of them were like dead serious. But I also cannot believe that this would actually be a surprising result to Mr. Beast because again, most of your content oh is about God. just She's how really far people just will misinterpreting everything best. he does. And two, to make the best videos. And here's my hot take. I don't think Mr. Beast makes the best videos on YouTube. <gasps> what? <laughs> okay. Retard alert. Retard alert. Come on. I mean, she's the type of person that would be like, I'm only watching the Super Bowl for Rihanna. Shut up. Middle finger. Listen, 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 buddy. First of all, Mr. Beast could upload one one minute video. It'd be better than the entire Tiffany Fur catalog. Not that I've seen it all. And so, you know, the other thing is like, he doesn't make good content. What? It is so good. It is so good. She only hates because she's not in the prime demographic. She, you know, she's past the, her prime or what. I mean, she's at the edge of the prime. Okay, I'll be generous. And the other thing is that, you know, obviously, oh, I'm going to critique everything. I'm, I'm gonna, it's like toxic and like, I mean, that's her mentality, of course. Shock. I do think he believes. This girl would be like the best looking um, Ethan Klein fan of 2023, okay? It, though. So let's examine that. Out of all the podcast episodes really and fun. interviews I listened to, nobody pushed back on this. Nobody really questions him. Do you actually believe you make the best videos on YouTube? Or even, yeah. how do you define the best video? What other sorts of videos do you think are great? I would love to hear his Mr. thoughts. Beast. I Mr. want to know blatantly, <laughs> what are Jimmy's metrics for success? Is best measured by views? Viral equals good? Does yes. spending more money equal a better video? Therefore, yes. the most expensive videos with the most views are the best? Yes. Now, hey, I do agree that the scale of production is impressive. His videos are certainly very elaborate. It's pretty cool to see a YouTube channel doing things that that we're used to only seeing in movies or on TV. And there are massive teams behind every single video. But again, high production value does not necessarily equal a great video. Of Yo, wait, hold of course, up. I she do love many YouTubers who hand. have high production values, really like ContraPoints and Philosophy Tube. but their videos aren't Shout great just because they spend more money on them. <laughs> the costumes, set design, <laughs> and soundtracks are definitely an added bonus, no but the best part of the video is the writing. And I know this is an entirely different genre of videos. Philosophy Tube, I think, is like ContraPoints or something which as we know is a transgender for the sake of youtube i'm not gonna say if it's a good or bad thing but um you know it's like mm, you know now now i know where she's coming from okay and you know i've been disagreeing with her so far so you know the audience same, is looking for something same. different. When you watch a Mr. Beast video, you don't close the tab she expecting to walk away with more knowledge on a topic or even about Jimmy gosh. himself. It's just, to me, sensory overload. If you took out all the crazy edits, the sets, the extravagance, what you're left with is a bunch of mostly white 20-something dudes yelling and throwing around cash. It's so like, what if they're white? If they were black, you'd be okay with it, you fucking racist? What? Mostly 20-year-old white guy? Yeah. And? And? So? So? Think about it. Mr. Beast probably was raised somewhere like in Ohio, raised by mostly white people, you know, was friends with mostly white people. The people that came up with him also are in the videos. They are mostly white. It's not like they're saying, like, if he grew up in Baltimore, it'd be mostly black guys and he'd be like the one wigger there. I mean, I don't know what the big comes when they take out the laugh track. And you realize that maybe the show wasn't so funny after all. Where is the waitress? I'm starving. It's a buffet, man. Anyway, if you want to hear more dissection of that best videos idea, watch the Letter 15's video on Mr. Beast and Meritocracy. I've promoted this video many times. Look at the guy reacting to this. This is like your average Mr. Beast hater. But I just have to Come continue.
best retained viewers? What can hold people's attention? What could go viral? My retention brain, when you talk about something, I'm instantly like, what value are they going to get? How many of them are going to be interested? What percentage of people do I think will lose? And I'm like running all those calculations in the background. Like bells are like, error, error, this is bad. <laughs> I don't have to think. I can just watch a video and it just screams in my head. Like, this is what should change based on the million videos I've watched and all these viral videos I consumed. Like anytime I watch a video or a movie or anything, I just can't stop thinking about what is optimal. It gives me a headache sometimes when I watch something too slow or I don't think it's optimal. Obviously my taste. Mr. Beast talks like he has an average IQ that somewhat annoys me. Mr. Beast kind of promotes the idea that his brand expansion is also for the greater good. Somehow him selling merch or snacks or burgers is not for his gain. It's not for money. These businesses help him help more people, right? True, Mr. Beast true. even claimed that he started Beast Burger during the pandemic because he wanted to help restaurants. It's debatable whether or not ghost kitchens help or hurt independent restaurants. Stop hating. So he's able to give that sweet, sweet entertainment back to his viewers and more money for giveaways. So buy my shirt, watch my video productivity, biohacking, work smarter, not harder. See, you see the ring at the bottom It's hyper-capitalist, rife with myths about masculinity and meritocracy. Interestingly, Mr. Beast does not seem materialistic in his personal life. Unlike other top earning YouTubers, he doesn't really flex his wealth. Not directly, at least. I just don't need a mansion to be happy. I don't need a supercar to be happy. I don't, I don't really need anything outside of this. You know, as long as I have a bed and a bathroom, I'm fine. Because of that, I don't have any liabilities outside of the company, so I can just reinvest it all. To me, money is just fuel to grow the business and help people, and not much else. Anyway, I was very interested to hear more of Jimmy's thoughts on work and the grind. Work-life balance, the separation of ourselves, a la severance, is a lie. But Jimmy really does have very little separation between his work and his personal life. How do you stay focused? For me, the problem I'm having right now is I struggle to wind down at night because I just work and work and I'll lay in bed and I'll think of ideas. I'm a little too focused right now, which is something I always have to correct myself. Uh, do you ever take days off? Yeah, of course. So the way I like to work, and I don't recommend you guys try this, I just work every day, every hour of the day until I just burn out. So like usually around day 10, I'll wake up and I'm just like, it's too much. Like, I can't keep doing these like 12, 15 hour days. You know, and then I'll take like really half a day or maybe a day depending on how severe it is. I'll just chill. I'll just kind of like nuke my calendar. Mm -hmm. and then and then by the next day, I'm fired up and I'm ready to go. And then I just do it again. And so it's weird, but that's what works really, really well for me. For some hustle bros, their rhetoric seems like a facade to make them appear hardworking and intense. But for Mr. Beast, the extent of his focus sounds surreal and very, very unhealthy. Burnout is not something he tries to avoid, unlike other YouTubers. He just leans in. In the Forbes interview, he said, what I do is just like a zombie. I get outside wow, my- she's gonna find a way to complain about this too. I don't feel like I'm progressing, then I feel like I'm wasting my time. Jimmy and like, yeah, I just kind of feel like a <laughs> waste of space, like piece of shit if I'm not like yeah. making videos, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's interesting, I feel the exact same way. I've worked to try to undo that part of my brain that calls me lazy, cue my laziness does not exist video. And I absolutely work to live, not live to work, which is a privilege for sure. But Mr. Beast obviously has that privilege as well. He could certainly work much less, but he really does not want to. He's really gamifying content creation. Optimizing and utilizing all the strategies he's learned over the years is a game. So when a video performs well and all those metrics are strong, he feels like he's winning. This ultimately is why he says work feels more like play. He doesn't have to force himself to work. If anything, he has to force himself to take breaks. Bodybuilders will be like, just go just to the gym, be disciplined, right I'm disciplined, go to the gym. Thing. But I would argue yeah. for those people, it's like, it's not even discipline. They just up. enjoy weightlifting. And so there's you know, people like me who just to an extreme level now. love building companies, right? It's not even discipline programmed. Also think about it. She's in her 20s. It's still moderately and growth. cute. And while like, on one hand, this does stuff. work for him she and his business model, it definitely isn't attainable for every single creator. And it should not be. Jimmy has created and risen to the top of this maximalist action-packed genre of videos. His studio puts in way more time, energy, and money than really anything else on YouTube. For the rest of us, this level of grind would be impossible to achieve. Yeah, it's it, obvious Mr. that Jimmy wants to make a legacy for himself. Finale. Unlike most other YouTubers who see this job as temporary or unstable, we'll do it as long as we have a decent audience. Jimmy is fully set on doing YouTube for the rest of his life. Lex Friedman asked what he would do. Also, by the way, fuck Lex Friedman. He's an idiot. Sophist. Can you even speak fullest. English right? Imagine being an MIT graduate. Fans want him to be that English. hero. He already is on a small oh, scale. Like Look at how much good he's done. If he were like even more rich and powerful, that would only increase the amount of good he could do, like a, right? I no, I don't think so. However, let me be clear. Mr. Beast is not the like problem, like but he's not the solution fuck. either. Mr. Beast like makes him. videos that millions of people enjoy. Kudos to him for that, okay? I genuinely do admire how passionate he is about YouTube. I'll admit, when I was watching all these hours and hours of podcasts, I was like, you know what? Mr. Beast seems like a regular guy, you know? He's just kind of a nerd about YouTube, which I, me too. I don't think we have similar mindsets on a lot of things, especially like work and money, but he doesn't come across as like evil in these podcasts, she wants except to the TMG one. But anyway, honestly. still, Mr. Really Beast down. is not a god. We should always leave room for criticism, especially- Scapegoat or what do you call that? To, to dismantle oh, the system, they wouldn't be a billionaire in the first place. Okay, well, this was a- You're saying a billionaire cannot be a socialist. I mean, it's like, bro, really? Really? Uh-huh. So like, there's never been aristocracy or revolutions from the elites outwards. Yeah, no. This girl's not well a video, up. pun intended, pun intended, I'm exhausted. And now I want to say a big thank you to my page. I uploaded one video, I'm exhausted. And then again, Mr. Beast making half a billion dollars, working, grinding. So what? He makes burgers, he eats them, he's like 10 pounds overweight. Who cares? Who cares? Anyways, that was a video. Cringe. Um, Tiffany Ferg, for the, you know, just for, for the reference, I would say she's like a 6 or 7 out of 10. I have not looked up any of her social media besides YouTube, so I don't know if she's like really tall. I don't know what the body's looking like, not to make it overtly sexual or anything, but you know, 
say face wise, she's like a six or seven. Also, keep in mind she's twenty seven. You know, she probably was hotter several years ago. So keep that in mind. Also, I am nineteen, but I feel as if I feel as if I know more about things than Tiffany, which is like okay, so then shut up then. You know, we don't want to hate on Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is like the hegemon of the Zoomers. I will oh seven. It's a salute. I respect it. And I do not hate on the on the player. You might hate the game, but that's a different thing entirely. So thank you all for watching.